So today I'm going to finish trimming these lupa vines. I'm gonna tackle this. I'm gonna get it done today, no matter what. <laughs> if they're tangling up, I'm just gonna just keep going with a tangled ball and fight it out. That way all these vines are trimmed up. We can come through and pull off the last bit of them, which that might take a little bit of labor too. I might have to rally the whole family for that. Hopefully it'll be as easy as it was on day one, because the very first day it wasn't too, too bad. No, it wasn't. And, and then, then when they were wet, it was real bad. Yeah. And we've had a few days for them to get that crunch back. So let's go take a look at them a little closer and we'll assess the situation. The main situation that's going on is I need to get the riding mower and throw all of this, mulch it, and throw it up on the beds because all that grass is coming in. And that's going to be a nice place to have the sheep come through and just eat fresh grass. We want to be able to run the sheep through the lanes again in the winter because winter is when we grow all our grass here. Yes. And we want to utilize these and still let the sheep fertilize all our loofahs. Yeah, and aerate. So sheep, their hooves, when they walk, mm -hmm. spread open and actually aerate the ground. So if we let them come down the lanes, they will eat all the grass that is growing. Mm -hmm. They will spread their manure everywhere, which will fertilize the ground. And then they will aerate it as they're walking. Any hard spots. It's just the <laughs> perfect cycle. So we want them to work this ground really good before spring. Yes. Definitely. And, and that's our goal here. So we need to get all the vines down, uh, possibly run our bottom wire. That way we can hold them in here a little better yep. and, and get this operation working. Yep. And hopefully it has just enough crunch. Oh, I don't hear no crunch. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> go over here. Is this where the crunch needs yeah, to be? Okay. Yeah, the, 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 the leaves crunch, crunch, but the vines, yeah, uh... I mean, when we first started, they had a little green to them, too. We lost that green. Yes. So we're, we're in our, we got ourselves in a situation that these have to get off of here now. So Ronnie's plan is to come through and string trim the trellises as much as he can. Hopefully, he'll be able to do it without too much like resistance there you go yeah <laughs> that's, a, that's yeah. a perfect word <laughs> resistance yeah. yeah it took a second but that is the word for yes. today yeah yes. also Brittany got a new electric pressure canner yes that's pretty cool so i have just a regular pressure canner that you know you put on your burners your stove top and you let it come to pressure and do all of that you have to babysit those a lot yes as far as the burner and temperature and pressure it, it takes it's a it's a it's a process. Mm -hmm. Well, my birthday was just a few weeks ago, and so we ordered mm -hmm. an electric pressure canner. So it's one that you literally plug in. Yeah. Put how much time you want it to cook. I think you have to wait until it has vented for there. It's ten minutes, and then you put the the you turn the vent off, and it does everything yeah. on its own. Super simple to use. You just pretty much yeah load it up. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and walk away and then you come back and, and pull your your canned goods out yeah so that'll save so much time being able to just load it up walk away yep and it'll small be small batches exactly yeah. small batches because right now if there's just something little i i don't want to put one jar two jars mm -hmm. three jars in i kind of like okay i'll just freeze it or figure out something else to do with it so if i'm able to just can a couple things at a time pretty much set it walk away yeah it's going to be amazing. Oh, game changer in the canning area. Yes. So we are going to unbox that today. Check it out. I haven't opened it at all. Lufa did a little chewing on the side of the box. But <laughs> other than that, I haven't looked at it. So I'm excited to open that up with you guys and mm -hmm. take a look at that. And then I have some things planned to can in the next few days. So you guys will have to come along with me as we try it out, test it for the first time. Yeah. And eventually we want to do like a side-by-side -side video, just, you know, how simple that is compared to uh, 
a regular baby pressure canner. the standard one. Yeah, yeah so. we'll be able to, I think we're going to do some of our tomato sauce. So all the tomatoes that we gathered throughout the whole summer, we have in our freezer. I think yeah. there's over 80 pounds of tomatoes and we need to get our freezer emptied up. So in the next week or so, we plan on pureeing all of those tomatoes down and cooking them up and turning Running them. Running them through the, the KitchenAid meal or something to yeah. take the seeds out. And or... the skin off yeah. it makes a wonderful sauce. We'll boil it down and then we will can some up. And uh, if we have problems with it, we'll let you know what that's about too. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we don't. Hopefully we, it's we just easy. We went a little farther and got the uh, the presto one yeah it's a presto uh, a electric... pricey. they're proud of it yes that's for sure yeah. it's a 12 quart they have a smaller version and then there's like a nesco brand and i said you know what my actual gonna pressure canner is a presto i like that brand so we're gonna go for we're sticking with the one. brands guys yeah, yeah. <laughs> The kids are going through and picking the last bit of the vines off. How's it going, guys? It's going good. Working for money or working for Pokemon? Pokemon. Oh, okay. So it is better than cash. Yeah, you guys got a lot of work, huh? Well, I'm going to keep going and then I'll come back and help you guys. At least get the vines all trimmed off and then pulled off the fences. parked across from me got pretty close to my bumper I will say but they didn't hit it so that's pretty good all right so I am leaving Home Depot right now um, the Lufa lady bought herself an air compressor so I use an air compressor with a pneumatic press to make my bath bombs and shower steamers and I've been using Ronnie's air compressor for the last while so it'll be nice for me to have my own um, that way I'm not having to constantly borrow his and then he's trying to find it and it's hooked up and I'm like I got my bath bomb sorry you can't use it so all well it's nice to have one of my own. Lufa Lady bought herself a present. It's just always gone when I go to use it. That's all I was saying. Well, I got my own. Sweet. <laughs> no problem here. showing me that we have chicken breast on sale. 99 cents a pound. That's good for 
chicken breast. Yeah. Hence, that is one of the things that we will be canning soon. We canned some chicken the other day, and it turned out oh, man. fabulous. It's like some lemon pepper chicken. I did three different yeah, ones. Three I did like a lemon pepper. pepper. Yeah. I did a just salt and pepper, mm -hmm. and then I did a salt, pepper, garlic, and onion. And both powder. of the seasoning ones were like the ones. Yeah. They were they were good. Yeah. Because it just like just marinated and, and got more flavorful, really. Yeah. One we made tacos with, I oh, think. Oh, yeah. Then yeah. one we had just with rice and eggs, and it was good. It was. Yeah. It was. I don't know what we did with the third one. So Maybe burritos? Yeah. So and look, look out in the next few days. We're going to be testing this thing out with chicken breast. <laughs> All right. We are going to plug this bad boy in. Let you guys see the first fire up. I mean, it looks pretty fancy. Dun, dun, dun. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so it is blinking pressure can. It has a little nozzle here. Boiling water. Okay. okay. So it's just, you can either pressure can or you can water bath can. And then, so if I were to say pressure can, it has the amount of time. So let's say we were doing some beans. Beans is oh, 90. Dang. So then if we selected that, it says to insert the jars. So you would insert the jars. And it is warming up. Okay, so maximum jar capacity. So if we're doing half pints, we can do 10 regular mouths or 14 wide mouths. For pints, we can do eight regular mouths or seven wide mouths. And then for quarts, five regular mouths or four wide mouths. All I right. think this is going to be pretty simple once yes. we figure it out. And it's going to make these sales like this uh really work for us really yeah you know you see a sale you buy it boom you load it in there let it can itself pull it out maybe run two loads in a day yeah you know no big deal i love it yeah i'm excited well that's good so we'll bring you guys along here in probably next week um to can up some lovely food yeah i'm excited thank you Okay, so we had somebody comment on Pete Salas. Hello, Pete. Um, he has just acquired a Sato S550G, and he had a question. So we are going to answer that. His is a 550. His question is, can you post a video showing how and where the ignition wires go onto the distributor? His tractor, when he got it, the wires were disconnected and it would really help him out. These tractors, hard to find parts, hard to get information. I was wondering why the old owner, when he gave it to me, he was like, you're going to need these. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess he is right, you know. Um, I'm not seeing it in here. Okay, well, let's so, just look at our tractor. Yeah. First one right there. So this is the first wire going from the front of the motor, and it lands right here. This one is the second. And the one right here is number two. Third right here. This one right here is number three. And then fourth. And then the fourth one is right back here. And coil in the center. Coil in the center. Hope that helps you. Hope that answers your question. Yeah. Let us know if we can be any more help. <laughs> All right. I just finished pulling everything that was left on row number one. So now I am going to get on to row number two and start pulling all of the rest of the vines down. <laughs> all right, we'll see how much I can get done on the rest of this row, and then that row, and that one, and that one.
right, we got row number two completely done. I think Ronnie is on his last row with the string trimmer and then he's gonna come and help me hopefully get all of these lanes done. That'll be nice. It'll be a completed job, which is always nice when you complete all the work for the job. <laughs> Got it. Yep, we are on the last row and the kids came out. Hey kiddos, you guys came out to help? You guys came at the last row. <laughs> okay. We're gonna finish it as a family. Heck yeah, whoop whoop. Get this done. Nice. Tomorrow I'll just be driving. Oh, the blonde mower? Yeah. Piece of cake. Easy peasy. Are we done? Oh, High five. Job. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, the team came through and we got it done. All the loofah lanes, the trellises are clean. There's no more loofah vines on them. So that is awesome. I'll come back through tomorrow with the riding mower and mulch up all the vines. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. All right, thanks for coming along with us today and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>